What's up, everybody? This is Justin with The Fight of Faith, and I got another Bible read-along for you guys. Um, and I'm actually doing a screenshot of the Bible app U version, so we can just follow along, do it a little differently this time. But yeah, um, if you don't have U version, what are you doing, right? You know, just, just download it. It's a free app. Let's, let's, let's get in the Word together. We love the Passion Translation. We're going to dig into Romans chapter 8, talking about living by the power of the Holy Spirit. All right? So verse 1, so now the case is closed. There remains no accusing voice of condemnation against those who are joined in life union with Jesus, the anointed one. Man, you are in union with Jesus. Amen. So for the law of spirit of life flowing through the anointing of Jesus has liberated us from the law of sin and death. You are liberated. You are free no longer under condemnation or fear of law, but you are completely free in Christ. Amen. So for God achieved what the law was unable to accomplish because the law was limited by the weakness of human nature. Yet God sent us his son in human form to identify with human weakness. Clothed in humanity, God's son gave his body to be the sin offering so that God could once and for all condemn the guilt and power of sin. Then God came as a man, stepped down from his throne, took on humanity to walk like us, talk like us, suffer as we would, be tempted as we would, and put to the end of guilt and power of sin once and for all. Amen. You don't have to deal with the power of sin. You you are overcomer now in Christ. So now, every righteous requirement of the law can be fulfilled through the anointed one living his life in us. And we are free to live, not according to our flesh, but by the dynamic power of the Holy Spirit. That Greek word is dunamis. You are full of the power of the Holy Spirit because Jesus is living in you. He's living his life in you. Amen. We'll talk about that more. Um, verse 5, those who are motivated by the flesh only pursue what benefits themselves. But those who live by the impulses of the Holy Spirit are motivated to pursue spiritual realities. In other words, you know, you when you're living for Jesus and for the kingdom, you ain't about just you and yourself. You are called in a ministry, whatever uh, that looks like. Uh, not necessarily over a pulpit, but you're called to impact others, not just for you, right? That we're called to further the kingdom of God. So, verse 6. For the mindset of the flesh is death, but the mindset controlled by the Spirit finds life and peace. And verse 7. In fact, the mindset focused on the flesh fights God's plan and refuses to submit to His direction because it cannot. When you're focused on your selfish fleshly desires and you don't want to submit yourself to direction and and uh and mentorship etc and come on so so no matter how hard they try to find their pleasure with those who are controlled by the flesh but when the spirit of christ empowers your life you are not dominated by the flesh but by the spirit and if you are not joined to the spirit of the anointed one you are not of him man if you're not joined to the spirit of jesus the holy spirit you're not of him. Why? Because Jesus is living his life through you now. See? So verse 10. Now Christ lives his life in you. And even though your body may be dead or like uh, in sin because of the effects of sin, his life-giving spirit imparts life to you because you are fully accepted by God. Not only are you accepted and not rejected, you are fully accepted by God. That means every inch of you, every part of you, 110% of you and everything about you, God fully accepts you for who you are. And he wants to live his life through you. Isn't that beautiful? So 11, yes, God raised Jesus to life. And since God's spirit of resurrection lives in you, he will also raise your dying body to life by the same spirit that breathes life into you. This is talking about Jesus living his life through you. Oh, Jesus' death, that's your death. His resurrection, that's your resurrection. Uh, his burial and ascension, that's your burial and, and ascension. He's living his life through you. And if you can't identify with that, then you got no part with Jesus. You understand? 
So let's go further. So then, beloved ones, the flesh has no claims on us at all, but we have no further obligation to live obedience to it. For when you live controlled by the flesh, you are about to die. But if you live of the spirit, um, but the, if the life of the spirit puts to death the corrupt ways of the flesh, then we taste his abundant life, that Zoe abundant life. So this abundant life we're talking about is centered in the identity of being a son and a daughter. You are not an orphan. You are destined for glory. Amen. So the mature children of God are those who are moved by the impulses of the Holy Spirit. God will literally give you his heart for people and he will give you words or nudges or you feel in your spirit that you got to pray for this person. You will literally be moved by impulses of the Holy Spirit. All right. And, and, that, and that takes growth to get to that point. Um, not perfect per people, but mature believers will walk with God and follow him. Amen. So, and you did not receive the spirit of religious duty, like obligation, but you leading you back into fear and of never being good enough. But you have received the spirit of full acceptance enfolding you into the family of God and you will never feel orphaned for he rises up within us our spirits join him in saying the words of tender affection beloved father that's Jesus speaking through you to the father for the Holy Spirit makes God's fatherhood real to us as he whispers in your innermost being listen this is God talking to you saying you are God's beloved child you are not an orphan he loves you so much. And since we are his true children, we qualify to share his treasures. For indeed, we are an heirs of God himself. Amen. And since we are joined to Christ, we also inherit all that he is and all that he has. We will experience being co-glorified with him, provided we accept his sufferings as our own. That's what I'm saying. At the end of days, when it's time for our resurrection and our glorified bodies, you will experience being co-glorified with him if you accept his sufferings as your own. That's the only way because you will have to be crucified in Christ. You have to be raised in Christ. You, you will be exalted in Christ. You know what I'm saying? This is all in Jesus. So you have a glorious destiny. In verse 18, it says, I am convinced that any suffering we endure is less than nothing compared to the magnitude of glory that is about to be unveiled within us. This is so amazing in verse 19. It says, the entire universe is standing on tiptoe. That, that translation also says all of the creation is groaning in anticipation, right? Yearning to see the unveiling of God's glorious sons and daughters. You are glorious. You are God's son and daughter. For against its will, the universe itself has had to endure the empty futility resulting from the consequences of human sin. But now, with eager expectation, all creation longs for freedom from its slavery to decay and to experience with us the wonderful freedom coming to God's children. Now remember, the earth has not yet been redeemed. We have been redeemed from the curse of the law. But sin and death reigned through Adam's sin, right? So this is what is talking about. The earth is, is going to be redeemed as well. And to this day, we are aware of the universal agony and groaning of creation as if it were the contractions of labor for childbirth. And it's not just creation. We who have already experienced the first fruits of the spirit also inwardly groan as we passionately long to experience our full status as God's sons and daughters, including our physical bodies being transformed getting glorious bodies for this is the hope of our salvation but hope means that we trust and wait for what is still unseen for why would we need to hope for something we already have right so this is talking about at, at the end at the resurrection the final resurrection we get our glorified bodies so because our hope is set on what is yet to be seen we patiently keep on waiting for its fulfillment and in a similar way the Holy Spirit takes hold of us in our human uh, frailty, frailty sorry, uh, to empower us uh, in our weaknesses. For example, at times we don't even know how to pray or know the best things to ask for. But the Holy Spirit rises up within us to super intercede on our behalf, pleading to God with emotional sighs and groans and etc. Too deep for words. 
So God, the searcher of the heart, knows fully our longings, yet he also understands the desires of the heart because the Holy Spirit passionately pleads before God for us, his holy ones, in perfect harmony with God's plan and our destiny. Bro, man, if you don't know what to pray and you're feeling lost and you don't know what to say, let the Holy Spirit pray through you, man. He knows exactly what to say in perfect harmony with God's plan for your destiny. Amen. So we are all convinced that every detail of our lives is continually woven together. Now get this. It's continually woven together to fit God's perfect plan of bringing good into our lives. For we are his lovers who have been called to fulfill his designed purpose, man. He is able to make all things abound for your good. Amen. All things, man. He can make it all happen for you. Verse 29, for he knew all about us before we were born, and he destined us from the beginning to share the likeness of his son. So this means the son is the oldest among a vast family of brothers and sisters who will become just like him. Because we're already like him. Matter of fact, we are in Christ, but we're talking about we are becoming more and more like him until the, the apex of that or the climax of that moment and the resurrection for our glorified bodies. So having determined our destiny ahead of time, he called us to himself and transferred his perfect righteousness to everyone he called. And those who possess his perfect righteousness, he co-glorified with his son. You are perfect. Can you believe that? The words of the Father just speaking over you that you are perfect in his sight. You are righteous. You are his son and daughter. You are not an orphan. Man, I like these like these titles. You're going to triumph in God's love, right? So what does all this mean? So if God has determined to stand with us, tell me who can ever stand against us? That's a good one. For God has proved his love by giving his greatest treasure, the gift of his son. And since God freely offered him up as a sacrifice for us all, he certainly with, wouldn't withhold anything from us else that he has to give. Because he already gave it all, right? So who then would dare to accuse those whom God has chosen and loved to be his? God himself is the judge who has issued the final verdict over them, not guilty man somebody shout right there give me a hallelujah because you are not guilty man you may look at your situation but the accuser of the brethren the thief or the father of lies the author of confusion the devil he's the one always bringing accusation but no god himself is the judge and he issued his final verdict over your life and he says you are not guilty because he's my son he's my daughter amen so then who is left to condemn us after that who can, you know, who can come against us? Certainly not Jesus, the anointed one, for he gave his life for us. And even more than that, he has conquered death and now risen, exalted and enthroned by God at his right hand. So how could he possibly condemn us since he is continually praying for our triumph? Man, do you know that Jesus is praying for you on behalf of you? He's interceding for us to the Father. You are in Jesus' mind every day. He thinks about you all the time. Who could ever separate us from the endless love of God's anointed one? Absolutely no one. For nothing in the universe has the power to diminish his love toward us. That is so beautiful, man. Troubles, pressures, and problems are unable to come between us and heaven's love. But what about persecutions, uh, deprivations, dangers, and death threats? Nah, for they all are impotent and hinder, omnip to hinder uh, omnipotent love. Even though it is written, all day long we face death threats for our sake. But God, we are considered to be nothing, to be sheep, uh, uh, to be slaughtered. Yet even in the midst of all these things, we triumph over them all. Say all, bro. You are meant to triumph over them all. For we are, God has made us more than conquerors. Even though you're facing those death threats and those challenges, he has demonstrated us his glorious victory over everything everything bro you overcome it all amen so now i live with the confidence after all this stuff you better have some confidence man i'm getting built up and stirred up right now so if i live with the confidence of his love blah blah blah, blah it took too long uh there is nothing in our present or future uh that uh that can uh, or circumstances that can weaken his love there is no power above us or beneath us. No power could ever be found in the universe that can distance us from God's passionate love, which is lavished upon us through our Lord Jesus, the Anointed One. 
man. So um, I'm sorry about the last uh, verse there. It got a little rushed, so check it out. Hopefully this, uh, this commentary blesses you guys and encourages you guys. The main fact that I get from all this is that God, is, Jesus is living his life through us, man. It's not about us. It's about furthering the kingdom. It's about serving others. It's about knowing who you are, that you're a son, you're a daughter, you're created in his image. You're set free from the power of sin and death. And there's no condemnation that can come against you to hinder you now because God has set his final verdict over you, saying that you are fully forgiven. You are not guilty. And he's the judge of the universe, right? So if he says it, man, you better settle it in your heart that you are not guilty, that you are God's beloved child god loves you so much man so i hope this blessed somebody i hope this encouraged somebody uh please subscribe on youtube uh follow us on instagram and facebook thank you for everybody for watching listen on spotify iHeartRadio, all the podcast apps itunes i love y'all thank you for partnering with us on patreon for as low as one dollar a month if you want but uh, thank you for following read your bible stay in your word stay exercising you know uh, stay healthy. I love every single one of y'all. And remember to keep fighting the good fight of faith. Take care.